In this video, we'll talk about notations and conventions related to the derivative. When f is a function and x is in the domain of f, the derivative of f at x is defined by a limit. We denote the derivative by f prime at x, and this derivative is equal to the limit as h goes to 0 of the difference quotient f at x plus h minus f at x, and this quantity is divided by h. This limit, whenever it exists, is the derivative of f at x, and we often write it as f prime of x. This is known as the limit definition of the derivative. If the derivative at x exists, then we say that f is differentiable at x. If y is equal to f at x, it is common to denote the derivative by y prime, or f prime at x. The prime notation for derivatives is sometimes called Lagrange notation, after Joseph Louis Lagrange, who used it in the 1700s. Originally, f prime was called the first derived function, and it's from that expression that we get the modern name of derivative. Another common notation is known as Leibniz notation. Let's start by saying that y is equal to f at x. We denote the derivative by f prime of x, but there's another way to denote the derivative, which is dy over dx, or dy dx, as we say. So we would normally pronounce this as dy d x, dy dx. Writing the derivative in this way is called Leibniz notation. As an example, we can look at the function y equals x squared. So if y is equal to x squared, then we know that the derivative is 2x. So we could write f prime of x is 2x, or we could just say dy dx is 2x. This is called Leibniz notation after Gottfried Leibniz, who introduced it in the late 1600s. Much of the notation that we use in calculus is due to the work of Leibniz. Let's make a little remark here. dy dx looks like a fraction, and often we treat it like a fraction. But it's not actually the ratio of dy to dx. We use this notation to remind us of how the derivative is defined f prime of x is equal to the limit of a difference quotient. But a difference quotient is a quotient of differences, and those differences are the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. So often when we look at the difference of the y's, we call that delta y, where delta is the Greek letter delta. Delta y, usually in calculus, indicates a small change in y. And the denominator is the change in the input, or the x values. x plus h minus x, that gives us h. So h is the difference between the x values, so we call that delta x. So instead of looking at the limit as h goes to 0, we could be thinking of this as the limit as delta x goes to 0, of delta y over delta x. It's the limit of the ratios of these delta y's to these delta x's. But it itself is not such a ratio. It's not a ratio of dy to dx. But we write it as dy to dx just to remind ourselves of where it came from. It's the limit of ratios of the difference of the y's over the difference of the x's. Having said that, it's often very convenient to treat it like a fraction, and we'll do that on some occasions. If y is equal to f at x, you can also denote the derivative at a point by a special notation. So suppose you want to look at the derivative of f when x is equal to a. One notation for that is f prime at a. But another way to write it is using the Leibniz notation, dy dx. But how do you indicate, if you write dy dx, that you're interested in the particular case where x is equal to a? The way we do that is we write a vertical bar, a vertical line, and then we write 
as a subscript for that vertical bar or vertical line x equals a. This is a very handy way to write it because it just presents it all to you all at once. You compute dy dx and you can write out the expression for dy dx and then you want to indicate that you're going to evaluate that expression at x equals a. It's a lot easier to understand if we look at a specific example. So suppose we want to write an equation of the tangent line to y equals x cubed at a specific point, at the point where x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 8. Well, we know that y is equal to x cubed, and we know how to compute the derivative of x cubed. dy dx is equal to 3x squared. That's the derivative. So if you want to compute the derivative at a point, we can say that dy dx evaluated at x equals 2 is equal to, and I could just plug in x equals 2 here, but really the value of this notation is we can write 3x squared, and then we can write the vertical bar, x equals 2. So I'm able to see the formula and also the value of x that I'm interested in at the same time. And that's the real advantage to this notation. I can see that the formula is 3x squared, and also I can see that I want to compute it at x equals 2. So let's just do that. 3 times x, but x is equal to 2 squared. Of course, 2 squared is 4, multiply that by 3, and you get 12. So that means that 12 is the slope of the tangent line. We're asked to find the equation for the tangent line. So we know that the equation for a line, if we write it in point slope form, is y minus y0 equals m times x minus x0. So this is what we call point slope form, where m, of course, is the slope. m is the slope, but also we have the x0 and y0. x0 and y0 are the given point. So x0 and y0, those are the coordinates of the given point. So x0 is 2 and y0 is 8. So we just plug everything in. y minus the y value is equal to the slope times x minus the x value. We could simplify it if we want or we could write it out in slope-intercept form if we want. y is equal to 12 times x minus 2 plus 8. If we just simplify this, we get the slope-intercept form. So this gives us that y is equal to 12x minus 24 plus 8. That's the equation of our line in slope-intercept form. Let's talk a little bit about something that we call differential operators. And this is related to the Leibniz notation. We've already mentioned that we can write f prime of x as dy dx, but you can also write it as df dx. But the way I want to write it here is I want to write the d by dx part separately and then write the f at x. When you see something like this, you should think of it as an instruction. You see the d by dx, and what that says to you is compute the derivative of whatever comes next. So in this case, we have d by dx of f at x. So that says to me that I want to compute the derivative of f at x with respect to x. The d by dx tells me to compute the derivative, and the fact that there's an x in the denominator, that's telling me what the variable is, just in case there are other letters in the formula, and I'm not entirely sure what the variable is, this expression tells me, compute the derivative with respect to x of this function f at x. So you should read it as compute the derivative of f at x with respect to x in your head, but the way you actually say it out loud is more like d by dx of f at x.
the advantage of this notation is that it makes it easier to write things out. For example, instead of saying this sentence, if f at x equals x cubed, then f prime of x equals 3x squared, we can more efficiently write it out as the derivative with respect to x of x cubed is equal to 3x squared. Everything is just in one compact expression. And if you want to evaluate this derivative at, for example, x equals 2, then you can write it this way. Compute the derivative of x cubed and evaluate at x equals 2. Or another way of saying that, d by dx of x cubed at x equals 2. If we want to go through computing this, the first thing we do is compute the derivative. The derivative with respect to x of x cubed is 3x squared. And then we want to evaluate that at x equals 2. So that's 3 times, and then where the x squared is, you replace it with 2 squared, which is 12. 3 times 2 squared is 12. Let's talk about something now called higher derivatives. The derivative of f prime, well, f prime is itself a derivative. f prime is the derivative of a function, but it is also a function in its own right. So now you can compute the derivative of f prime. The derivative of f prime is another derivative. It's called the second derivative. And we usually write that as f prime prime. But this is another function of x so we can compute the derivative of that. The derivative of f double prime is called the third derivative, and so we write it as f prime 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 at x. But this gives us a new function of x, so again, we can differentiate it. We can compute the derivative of the third derivative, and that gives us the fourth derivative. And we write that as, well, we generally don't write that as f with four primes. We usually write a four, in a superscript with parentheses around it. So if you see an f with a superscript, which is a 4 with parentheses around it, that usually means compute the fourth derivative. We write it like this instead of writing f with 4 primes, because if you start writing f with 4 primes or f with 5 primes, it becomes rather unwieldy and impractical, and it can get quite difficult to read. So usually after the third derivative, we get rid of the primes and we just use the superscript in parentheses. We can also write higher derivatives using Leibniz notation. So we start with our f prime, which is our first derivative, that's dy dx. The second derivative, which is f double prime of x, is the derivative with respect to x of the derivative of y with respect to x. The way that you write this out in shorthand is you treat all of these d's and dx's like they're their own entity that you're multiplying together. So in the numerator we have d dy, so we write that as d squared y. And in the denominator there's a dx and a dx, so we write that as dx squared. It's not really multiplication, it's iteration of differentiation. So it's telling us to take a second derivative that is to say, it's telling us to take the derivative twice, but the way we write that in shorthand is d squared y over dx squared. But what that means is compute the derivative of the derivative. And we can continue in this way. The third derivative is the derivative with respect to x of d squared y by dx squared. And again, in the numerator, we have d times d squared is d cubed. And in the denominator, we have a dx times dx squared, so that's dx cubed. But again, remember that this is notation, which is shorthand for compute the derivative three times in a row. These superscript threes here are not really multiplication. It's just a shorthand to help us write it out more easily. And we could go on computing fourth derivatives and fifth derivatives and so on. As an example, we can look at our function f at x equals x cubed. So the first derivative, f prime of x, is 3x squared. But you can compute the derivative of that, and you get f double prime of x, which is 6x. And you can compute the derivative of that, and you get f triple prime, the third derivative, and that's just 6. 
and you can compute the derivative of that and you get zero. And you can compute the derivative of that, well, you get zeros forever after that. Once a derivative is zero, then it's always going to be zero. A common place for second derivatives to show up is motion. So we usually use s at t to denote what we call the position function. And this represents the distance away from a fixed point. In this case, the first derivative, which is s prime, we can also write using Leibniz notation as ds dt. Let's ask ourselves what this means. ds is a small change in distance or position dt is a small change in time. So the derivative s prime is a change in distance over a change in time, distance per time. s prime of t is the instantaneous velocity, which we often write as v at t to equal s prime of t. One of the nice things about Leibniz notation is it makes it very easy to see what the units should be. ds is a change in distance, dt is a change in time. So here, s prime has units, units distance per unit time. And those are the units of velocity. So v of t, velocity, or instantaneous velocity, is the derivative of the position function. We can also compute the derivative of v. Now the derivative of velocity, that's the second derivative of the position function. So s double prime, the second derivative of the position function, is the first derivative of velocity, which is dv dt in Leibniz notation. So what should the units of this be? Well, dv represents a change in velocity, and dt is a change in time. So units of velocity per units in time. So that, for example, would be meters per second per second, or meters per second squared. Those are the units of acceleration. And in fact, the second derivative of position, or the first derivative of velocity, is the instantaneous acceleration, which we normally call a at t. a at t is v prime of t, and it's also s double prime at t. As an example, consider this function. s sub t is equal to minus one half g of t squared plus v sub zero times t plus s sub zero. This is used to describe the distance above ground level of an object that is launched straight upward with initial velocity v sub zero from an initial height s sub zero. So the sub zero here is supposed to indicate that we're looking at the time t equals zero. When t equals zero, the velocity is v sub zero. When t is equal to zero, the position, which is given by s at t, is s sub zero. This g here is the acceleration due to gravity. We can compute the first and second derivatives. The first derivative, which is velocity, is s prime of t. And this is equal to minus g of t plus v sub zero. If you compute the derivative of that, you get the acceleration the derivative of velocity, the second derivative of position, and what you get is minus g. Here g is the acceleration constant. We're actually imagining that g is positive in this case. The minus here is to indicate that the acceleration due to gravity is going down. So we're imagining that g is a positive number. And then the acceleration due to gravity is downwards, so that's what the minus sign is here for.